In this video, we'll talk about the label propagation algorithm. Often, we have some sort of label attached to the nodes of our network. For example, if it's a social network, the label could be anything from language to political affiliation to favorite football team. It's also very common that the affiliations or labels of some nodes are known, but the labels of others aren't. In this network, we know the labels of four of the nodes. We have two red and two blue, but we don't know the rest. A label propagation algorithm aims to use the labels which are known to infer the unknown labels. To get some intuition, consider a random walk on the network. We start at the node labeled A, pick a random edge and traverse it to the next node. We then do the same for this one. In principle, we could turn around and go back the way we came, though we sometimes exclude this possibility in a random walk. We stop to walk when we reach a labeled node. Here we have randomly stepped from node A along the network and ended up at a red label. If we did this again, we could end on a different node. Some walks would end in a red node and some would end in a blue. From the way this network is drawn, it seems obvious that walks from node A will most often end up in a red node since these are closer. This is the intuition behind label propagation. The label propagation algorithm is quite simple. First, we initialize all the labels. If we know some information beforehand, then we use that. However, if not, we assign an arbitrary unique label to each unlabeled node. Here, L is some labeling function that assigns a label to node N. So initially, every node is just labeled by its name, say. Next, we choose a random visit order. The label propagation algorithm is non-deterministic. We will not necessarily get the same results every time. However, if the network has a lot of structure or similarly labeled things are close together, then most of the time the final labelings will be the same or at least very similar. Then, for every node we visit, we collect the labels of its neighbors and assign the label of the target node to be the same as the most common label in the neighbor set. Often, there are multiple labels with the same count, in which case we just pick one of the most common labels at random. For example, take the node B. Two out of three of its neighbors are red nodes labeled one. So we label it red. Node C has two out of three blue neighbors, so it gets labeled blue. Most of the other nodes will be labeled red. What about the final node? Here we see the non-determinism of the label propagation algorithm. This node has two red neighbors and two blue ones, so it will randomly get assigned red or blue. More advanced algorithms exist that could label a node as partially in multiple groups, for example, 60% red and 40% blue, but for simple label propagation, a label is just chosen at random. Generally, the majority of nodes will have a definitive label, and the number of nodes like this one will be small. However, the problem does arise in practice. Here is the Karate Club again. We could start the label propagation algorithm by assigning different labels to the two main characters, the instructor and the president. However, it is common to use label propagation as a community detection algorithm. This means we assign every node an arbitrary label and allow label propagation to find a label assignment, giving us the different node communities present in the network. Here, we see two main communities, gray and blue, and two little offshoot communities in the bottom left. In practice, label propagation on this network is slightly unstable. I have obtained anything from two to five communities by starting with different random seeds. Usually, it is the intermediate nodes that sit between communities, or nodes which sit apart from the rest, like the yellow and the magenta here, which swap communities frequently, and the majority of nodes are usually assigned to one or the other faction. 